um, thanks everyone for coming along. Um, if you've been to any of our other sessions, you'll know that I am Lisa and I look after our um, exchanges outside of Europe. Um, so that is the Americas, Asia and Oceania um, regions. And then we have Manon here as well. And Manon, do you want to say hi? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Manon looks after um, our partners inside of Europe um, yeah. and the Erasmus programme. So this session today is about um, standout options, like places that you might not necessarily think about going on exchange to. Um, so we have identified a few, but obviously we really want you just to think outside the box and think about, don't just kind of go with the flow and think, oh, all my friends are putting down America on the list, so I'm going to put down America and maybe think, like is there someplace else that you that might be more exciting or interesting not that america isn't exciting or interesting but something just a bit different um, and also then maybe from if you're a language student for example if you're studying french you might think university of montreal and um, to your french there rather than go to the traditional uh, places in france um or um other places in europe that speak french um am i where else would be am I right in saying switzerland Manon, or, or no am i wrong yeah, yes, perfect. <laughs> and then as well for Spanish, you might, you, again, you might, you, a lot of people might be going to Spain, but you might consider maybe going to Mexico or Chile. We had two students there last year. So again, they're, they're great options as well for language students. And um, so, yeah, so why would you think of something, going someplace different? Well, really, I think that when you pick one of these locations, um, you could be looking to get a real cultural immersion, and um, so you get get the get a maybe a really different cultural experience more so than um, if you go to the the more mainstream or popular choices where um, you might be a lot more familiar with the culture. Um, again, if you go someplace a little bit different. Um, it's, it'll make future employers curious, it'll make you stand out a little bit. One of the things that for me, I went to Japan when I was um, in university for a year and I still get asked questions about it and I still get, um, um, people still find it really interesting even though it was like well over 10 years ago now at this stage. Um, Another thing to think about is affordability. Potentially, one of these options could be a lot cheaper than than um, some of the some of the more common destinations. And um, you could think about the places that you'll get to travel to. Um, there could be like the I know in for example in Asia you have Air Asia, which is the equivalent of Ryanair. So getting to go someplace like Vietnam or or Thailand or someplace for forty euro is just like a great experience. And then for me, which is very important, food, all that really tasty different food. Um, like yeah, that's just so, like especially if you're considering maybe going to Asia, that's just phenomenal uh, for me. And of course, um, you might look at um, be thinking about the weather and, and the different climates and it might have a deciding factor and as well, ed the education and the style of education that you're going to get there and the perspective as well. I think that can be really interesting when you when you go someplace that isn't as, as I said, mainstream, a mainstream choice that's, you know, where a lot of our UCD students students go. And of course, just to make you stand out from the crowd and be slightly different. Um, today we have got um, student exchange advisors from that went to Singapore, and Japan, and then um, Norway, and Kalina, where did you, was it Sweden? Where Sweden. did you say you were? Sweden, perfect. Um, I'm really grateful that um, our four students have um, come along today. Sure, it's Rob. We have Rob who was in um, Singapore. We have Raphael who was in Japan. We have Kalina who was in Sweden, and we have Rory who was in Norway. Um, and what I might do is I might start with um, Kalina, and Kalina, I might ask you just to introduce yourself and what you're studying at UCD and uh, where exactly you went on exchange. Yeah. Hi, um, I'm Kalina. I went to Lund, uh, which is the south of Sweden near Copenhagen, and I'm studying English literature and philosophy. Oh, excellent. Um, and then we have uh, Raphael, who was in Japan. Do you want to introduce yourself, Raphael? All right, so hey, I'm Raphael. Um, I studied at the University of Tokyo and I'm studying economics, politics, and international relations. Brilliant. And uh, Rory, do you want to go ahead? 
Yeah, hi, I, I'm Rory. I study history at UCD and I was I did my exchange at the University of Bergen in Norway. Brilliant. And Rob, if you want to go ahead. Hey, I'm Rob. Uh, I do mechanical engineering and I went to uh, Nanyang Technological University in Singapore. Okay, excellent. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Um, Rob, we might start with you. Um, and just if you want to, like, just chat through maybe some of your some of your highlights of um, your exchange in Singapore and um, making the decision to go to Singapore. So two things there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, in terms of how I decided to go to Singapore, uh, is a funny one because I originally kind of wanted to go to America. Um, but then I ended up just throwing down Singapore on my uh, application form because I had an extra spot and uh, I ended up getting that one, which kind of worked out very well because I had a great time. Um, but like, I didn't really know much about Singapore before going over, uh, but it turned out like it's, it's not like you, it's not like you'd expect, I guess it's the cleanest, uh, safest country in the world. It's a massive financial center. It's a, uh, right at the center of Southeast Asia. So it's really good for travel and it's really cheap. Like you could, you could book flights to Vietnam or Thailand or anywhere really in Southeast Asia for within like 50 Euro and you could just live really cheaply. Um, it's also the thing about Singapore as well is that it's, it's sort of regarded as being one of the most expensive cities in the world. But the good thing about being a student over there, uh, particularly an international student, is that you can live really cheaply because there's a lot of sort of student perks like accommodation uh, on the campuses is super cheap. Uh, food is really, really cheap. I didn't have to cook once because it's kind of like the culture over there is that eating is sort of a really social kind of event. So there's these sort of hawker centers, food courts everywhere, and uh, they serve really, uh, really cheap uh, food from like a variety of cuisines from all over Asia. So the food is really, really great and really cheap. Um, and the university itself that I went to, NTU, and there's another one out there, NUS, and I think SMU are the other two. And they're all very well regarded, like NTU and NUS are something like 11th and 12th uh, in the world uh, ranked and SMU is not far behind. Uh, so in that sense, it's also really great for the CV, but uh, uh, in every in every other aspect like it was it was actually I think it was the perfect place I could have gone and I'm really happy I ended up going there so I definitely recommend looking into uh, Singapore yeah that's brilliant thanks Rob yeah and I think we had discussed before Rob that sometimes you can make an assumption that some place is going to be expensive but actually it's really worth doing a little bit of research when you're picking your universities and all of the universities have um like a cost of living page so you know you can just google whatever university university of tokyo cost of living university um of nottingham nimbo cost of, cost of living sorbonne university cost of living and you know they'll always give you like a realistic uh, um idea of how much it'll cost you to, to be there for a semester or a year that's great thanks rob and um, we might go um with rory rory would you tell us a little bit about um um your time in norway and yeah, um, sure. no um yeah um, I guess I should give some background first. So I actually yeah. spent some of my childhood in Norway. Um, I, my dad moved there for work when I was three. So I lived there for six months when I was three. Um, so I had a bit of a connection with Norway before I went. But I think like when I was looking at exchange, um, I already knew I wanted to go somewhere that matched what I like doing with my time and kind of matched my lifestyle and my hobbies and stuff. So I'm, I'm really into the outdoors, really into like skiing and hiking and running and stuff like that. Uh, and Norway is so really, really famous for that. Um, so I guess like kind of similar to uh, to Rob, like Norway gets this big rep uh, reputation of being really expensive. And Norway, it is an expensive country, but I think as a student, it's really not off-putting. So um, they're really big into student discounts in Norway. So pretty much everywhere does a student price for everything. So on public transport, uh, even supermarkets will do student discounts. You know, if you go for food, it's always a student discount. So that really came in in, in handy. Um, I lived in, so this is in Bergen. So Bergen's a city on the west coast of Norway. Um, I lived in a student, in student accommodation, kind of in this big student village. Um, and the rent was actually pretty cheap when you think about it. It was about 350 euro a month. And I've got mates in Dublin so who are saying- Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. I was so just it's, like Yeah, people pay twice that in Dublin or more. Um, I, I mean, I think, 
they just really, they have a lot of the, the system that's set up for student accommodation in Norway makes it affordable. And obviously with the Erasmus grant as well, like effectively I had my rent paid for by the Erasmus grant. So that was really, really nice. Um, I was living off about 300 euro a month for food um, and for like just what I was doing. And that was about right. And um, I would say you've done, so it was like, you're looking at about 650 euro a month in total. Um, you know, which is that's not awful. It's, it's a lot of money, but it's not like, I wouldn't reckon that it should be the off-putting factor in terms of going to Norway. Um, yeah, I agree. And like, because like, it's probably because you're getting the Erasmus grant as well. It's probably, you're probably where if you live at home with your parents here in Dublin, you don't have, probably don't have to pay or contribute too much to food. So um, if, if, whereas if you're not and you are buying your meals every day in Dub or every week in Dublin, it's probably not far off what you'd be spending anyway, I'm assuming. Yeah, exactly. The thing I would really, really argue about, like kind of going back to my, my first point in terms of Erasmus, I think like what's really cool about Erasmus is almost wherever you go, you'll have that Erasmus experience. So you'll meet fellow Erasmus students, you know, like there's really good nights out. You make friends for your whole life. You go on really cool trips. Um, but I think what was really cool about my decision with going to Norway in terms of how it fit into what I want to do with my life anyway or in my lifestyle. Um, and I'd really, if you if people know what they like and know what they like to do, I think it can be really cool that you can kind of simultaneously have this Erasmus lifestyle, which is really, really fun, and then also be doing what you love all the time as well. And so it really almost doesn't feel like college, if that makes sense. Like you just feel like you're on kind of an extended holiday. Um, I mean, you don't want to tell your parents that, but I guess um, you just really have a a good time um yeah, yeah that's pretty that's really good advice like to think about what you like to do and in your own life and base your decision on where you want to study um with that in mind um and i know we have had a lot of like for example um um athletes who are really into or I know some of them have been very keen runners and they've based their um, their choice of American universities off that. So it's a really good way of doing it. And then we've had like rugby players go over and play on, on university teams. And um, it's good to think about what you're interested in doing here in Ireland and think about what your what universities you're you're putting down on your application form. Um, because you know straight away you've got your you know that your interests are accommodated there and that is a way to make make friends and build up a network yeah exactly and um, i would say i know one of the questions that we it was like what should you do before you go and i'm not sure how the other guys felt but i think um you can you know join some groups on facebook and stuff but one of the coolest things is really just going and kind of working it out when you get there and kind of discovering the city for yourself and um, I'm, I'm from Dublin so I, like I live with my parents when I go to UC so I think it was like really one of the things I reflect on was that yeah you went to a new city and you really discovered the city to yourself and it's uh, that's a really really cool experience so I wouldn't get too stressed about doing any kind of prep work you know maybe join some of those like Erasmus students uh, uh, Facebook pages and stuff but what, one of the big factors for me was always just kind of going and finding things on the ground and you know just discovering things and that's what the big thing the big part of Erasmus I would say yeah that's that's great advice, Rory. Hundred percent, yeah. And that's one of the things that um people are probably sick of me saying saying it in these sessions, but it's like you won't you, you you get out of it what you put into it. So if you kind of just end up sitting in your student accommodation watching Netflix, then you're not going to have a great time. Whereas if you get out and about and start exploring, you naturally bump into people. You um are at events and getting to see and do things. So yeah, that's really good advice, Rory. Well done yeah it's kind of um the kind of just the keep showing up um mentality that i mean kind of just keep going to events keep going to things you see that are on I and mean, like the worst thing that happens is you just go home and hang out with your roommates anyway and that's, yeah. that's still fun and like yeah. that's the same with like you know every weekend like you could you can go out with people that you've never met before or you, or you can just go out with people that you are in your apartment or whatever and um, yeah. yeah i think that like people making friends is really really easy when you're on exchange because that's exactly why everyone is there um yeah. so that's not something to be too worried yeah about. everybody straight away has that in common yeah that's that's a really good point um Kleena, do you want to talk a little bit about your time in in lund yeah. um yeah so lund um sort of city-wise it's quite small it's like sm way smaller than dublin but it's okay. uh, very much an international kind of hub so most of the students there are like international students so everything you do it's really easy to kind of make friends because everyone's looking to 
kind of build up on a, an Erasmus experience. Yeah. Um, yeah, the university is a bit different um, than Arden. So like each semester, you only do two subjects um, per half of semester. And they're like kind of more intense and more geared around like kind of discussion and conversation. So classes would be like three hours long. Um, but did you like that? How did you find I, it? Yeah, it was it was kind of diff difficult at the time because I didn't really understand like, oh, do I not do reading? No, it's kind of more prepared discussion. But then you get to know your classmates really well and you can go out like in the class, you might take an hour to go get coffee and just discuss the readings. And it's like a really interesting perspective because so many people are like international students, you get kind of perspectives from America, like China, uh, Germany, like all over. Um, yeah, so it's it's That's very really different. Really yeah, but it's really cool. Yeah, definitely like yeah, one of the yeah. things I loved about it. Yeah. Yeah, it's really interesting way of doing. Like, I, I hadn't, I haven't come across, I haven't come across an example like that before, and um, it's a really fascinating way of learning, and probably like a skill. You probably developed a skill there as well that you'll bring on through to your stage four here at UCD, or even through like if you go on to masters or level or or that. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's um, it really opens you up to kind of um perspectives of other countries, like um. I've made friends now with people who I never thought I could get along with. I've two friends who are Brexiteers and quite conservative, but I kind of learned how to appreciate how different and interesting their perspectives are. Um, so like, that's something I do really appreciate, like the chance to meet people with completely different perspectives. Um, but you get to know each other so yeah. well, so. Yeah, so interesting. Thanks, Rachel. Mm -hmm. And uh, what about so that was university and the and and uh, the town or city itself. And is there anything? Is there anything like any highlights or anything that you'd add about your um, exchange? Yeah, I I joined the um, Erasmus Student Network, so ESN. They're in a lot of different countries, um, and they're great because it's kind of an organization for international students by international students, and they do a lot of traveling and things. So. I saw like a good bit of Sweden, um, and multiple yeah. different cities, um, went up to the Arctic Circle and everything. And wow. like, it's, it's such a big country. You don't really um, realize that it's about 1,500 kilometers long. Um, so many different cities that are so different. So traveling even just within the country, it's, it's like amazing, yeah. Yeah, that sounds really great. Yeah, amazing. Um, we might we'll come back to you, Kleena. We might yeah. go on, move on to to Raphael, just to talk a little bit about um University of Tokyo and living in Japan. Yeah. So actually, before I went to Tokyo, I didn't really think about it. It was more of just there's an opportunity there, so I'm gonna take it. And I amazing. did. And coming back, I realized that like my time spent there was almost like a soul searching experience for me. Like oh, wow. I never thought I would be able to do any of the things that I could do until I finally arrived there. And so a lot of things that I did, like even cycling and exploring Tokyo, which is like already a really big city, like the population of it is like 9 million, which is already like Ireland is, all of Ireland is 5 million. And so to go into a place which is like double the population of Ireland is completely crazy. But it's just a matter of like, yeah, always learning new things and Tokyo, especially like uh, studying at the University of Tokyo, like we, we could take like language classes as well. And they are optional and I took them, but it was almost like every single time while I was learning new things, I was always picking up the language. And yeah. I guess that's also a really good part of it too, uh, when you're yeah. studying in Japan. And, and also the interesting thing is um, if you do go to Japan, there's this, um, you can apply for a scholarship and they nearly always recommend everyone to go for it. But I actually got it and it's the JASO uh, grant. And it's basically like 80,000 yen or like 800 euro a month, which is really crazy because my rent That's at the University of great. Tokyo was only like 150 euro a month, which is really crazy. Um, and yeah, like uh, like Kleena said. Yeah, 
Oh, sorry. Did, did many of your, did many of the other exchange students manage to get the same scholarship as you? Well, what would you say was the percentage, like out of the people you knew, what was the percentage of people that got it? Yeah, actually, the interesting, the interesting thing is that, like, if you end up going to one of the big, like, universities in Japan, so, like, that would be um, University of Tokyo, uh, University of Kyoto, like, Waseda, Keio, a lot of the time, it would be, like, 80% of the students would get it. So I would say uh, it's a really, really good opportunity to, like, just go for it anyway. Yeah. Um, and, like, with Kleena, actually, like, um, what I found was also like I got to meet people from different countries so some of my closest friends were like one guy was from New Zealand one guy was from Singapore um, a friend of mine was from Taiwan another friend was from the UK another friend was from um, Malaysia like it was crazy literally meeting yeah. all of these people that I wouldn't have ever dreamed of meeting before yeah that is I think one of the best things about going on exchange like it's the lifelong friends and they do end up being lifelong like for myself I st I'm still in contact with friends from living abroad in, in Japan and Dubai and America. And I was in Singapore maybe two a year or two years ago, probably two years ago now at this stage. And friends of mine were living there that I'd met known in Dubai. And you just say, hey, I'm in, I'm in Singapore. And the response is always going to be like, let's meet up every single time. So no matter where you go, or like no matter when you go to countries where you have the friends from exchange, like you, it's just so great to get like to meet, meet up with people or even have free accommodation or whatever it is but it's it's one of the one of the highlights of exchange I think yeah exactly and um, uh, Raquel is going to ask you um what what um countries or choices had you got on your application form or do you even remember uh I don't remember I think I really I was dead set on going to somewhere in Asia just for a different change because like I live in Monaghan so it's in, it's in like in the middle of nowhere and so I wanted to go for something like really big like okay let me really go for it so I went for uh I went for Japan I put down stuff for Japan put down stuff for Singapore and Hong Kong if I can remember yeah um yeah 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 so. Um, yeah, it's great. Like, I think the thing about Japan is that we actually quite have quite a number of uh, partners in Japan. So um, it's a really good option for students to stick down. And, and as well, I'm sure you found this when you were living in Japan, Raphael. It's quite, it feels quite safe there as well, doesn't it? It feels like, you know, um, and again, like Singapore, like really clean and, and there is the opportunity as well, I suppose, maybe not as cheap as flights to Singapore, that there is the opportunity to travel yeah. to other places like China and Korea uh, while you're there, or maybe do a trip at the start or the end of your exchange. Um, what would you say, Raphael, was your, was your highlight of being on exchange in Tokyo? Um, oh, there's so many different things, actually, like, well, in Tokyo specifically, it would be like yeah. during the exams, just like, hanging out with the other exchange students and like going to the convenience stores and just like getting snacks and then going back and studying together. Like that's something yeah. I could never have done here, I think. Right, um, amazing, yeah. 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 That's different, different way of doing things. But in general, um, I actually traveled around Japan and there was this like cycling trip that you can do where you cross like five islands and okay. uh, you get to the other side and it's like a completely different area. That's definitely my highlight. I traveled like with my uh, with with my friend from New Zealand. I just did everything by bike. It was just amazing. Wow. And was that in the south of Japan? Was it those islands in the south, or where was it? Yeah, so it was um, the main island where like it's close to Hiroshima, but okay. you basically like cross the small five islands and you get to the southern island. Kind of. Okay. It's crazy. Sounds very good. Yeah, I love it. Um, okay, so what we might do um, really quickly is um, we might just ask you all about your um, accommodation. I know some of you might have touched on it slightly. Um, so yeah, if we start with maybe at the top with Rob and if you just want even less like one or two sentences on where you lived and what it was like. Uh, yeah, I lived, um, which is probably the best thing to do in terms of uh, if you're in, in NTU, which is where I went, because it's a bit outside the city. Uh, so all your friends will be living on campus. That's what I did. And um, they have like a lot of, they've like probably like five times as, as much accommodation as UCD would have. And it's much cheaper. Like I, I had my, 
my own room in kind of a dorm so mm-hmm. like it was like a shared bathroom um but I had my own my own bedroom which was relatively modern as well the gym had like a the building had like a gym and a food court and stuff um and it cost like uh, it must have been like two two fifty two fifty euro uh, a month um so that was really that was uh, really handy but then there was also much che- there were cheaper options like if you were in a shared room you'd probably pay like uh, maybe 180 or something if you're in one of the older buildings um okay. so yeah they have a oh. lot of different options good to know and then Kalina what was the story with your accommodation yeah so because like Lund University the city is the campus there was lots of kind of little villages dotted around the suburbs so I lived in one of them um okay. and I had about six housemates but we each had our own room and bathroom and I think it was about 350 a month. So it was much better than Dublin is. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, and, and it's was all... it easy to get into college and stuff? Was it, was it much of a commute? Um, so Sweden is really big on cycle paths and cycling. So it was about 20 minute cycle to get anywhere in the city, okay. um, which is really good. Yeah, that um, is good. Yeah. Um, and Rory, what about in Bergen in Norway? Yeah, so I lived, um, kind of similar I live in a, a student accommodation and um, there's multiple universities in Bergen but the all the housing for all the universities is run by one organization so we get like people from different universities in kind of these one in these housing places and um, so my, my place was about 10 minutes outside the city by tram and uh, the public transport in Norway is fun, it's phenomenal it's really cheap it's really um reliable so this yeah. tram ran until four o'clock in the morning in the weekends so you could take it home from nights out like it was just unreal perfect um, yeah, so I paid about 350 to 380 euro a month. So kind of, it seems like on the expensive side for the people here, but compared to Dublin, that is just, yeah, really, really cheap. Um, okay. I shared kind of, I shared a kitchen and a bathroom with one other person, but there was kind of different types of accommodation, even in the same village. Um, I got really lucky because okay. my flatmate was like, she was great. We're, we like, we're still really good friends. And that made such a difference in terms of settling in. Um, but I know that nearly everybody yeah. got on with their flatmates. Like that's really never a problem. Um, and okay. yeah, I really recommend for exchange students to go and live where the other exchange students live because they kind of become the backbone of your social network is people you meet at your accommodation. So, um, but yeah, no, okay. it was good. Brilliant. Okay. And then uh, Raphael, um, your accommodation in Tokyo, what was that like? Yeah, so there were five different types of uh, accommodations for students. The one that I went to was actually a student run accommodation, which meant that they could lower the cost and just focus on like um, cleaning and everything. And so that's why mine was only like 150 euro a month, like for, for basic rent. Um, and then everything else, like electricity was, uh, it's like a top up system. So you just top it up as you go. But everything was in my room, like my kitchen, my bathroom, like everything I needed was there. So it's perfect. The only thing was, um, so, oh, yes. Um, and we also have like a cycling culture. So you need to cycle like 20 minutes to get to the train station. But after that, like Japan is also known for like the transport. So you're basically fine there, like 30 minutes and you're right on campus again. Brilliant. And um, what was that like being in student run accommodation? Was there any differences or was it just that the managers of the accommodation were students, but you wouldn't, you wouldn't, it didn't come across in any other way? Actually, it was really, really chill. Like uh, we had our main like common hall where you can study, but at the beginning of the year, and I found this like really like crazy, but they're just like, oh, you can pick up your fridge and pick up your microwave and you can just like take it to your room. And we are like, what? But Like the office was run just by like staff, which is good. And there's normally police officers who like go around at night, but then it's normally fine. And actually in my building, the third floor was specifically for women only. And it was like really, really safe. Like um, they had like a padlock system and everything, which is really cool. Um, And the rest are for guys, but. Sorry, go on. (laughs) Oh, no, no. Um, Go ahead. <laughs> I was just saying like they're taking their security very seriously then yeah they do and even then it's like really really safe like you can be out at 3 a.m in, in, in Tokyo and it would be fine honestly yeah 
Yeah, brilliant. Okay, dokie. And um, we've come up, that time has flown by so fast. It's already half one. And um, thank you so much, guys, uh, for coming along today. We're going to continue with the presentation. So you're welcome to stay or you can head off. But um, thanks again for, for joining us today. Just talk a little bit about, um, we're going to talk a little bit about standout options. So I'm going to talk a little bit about um, Asia in particular, Japan and um, South Korea, China and Singapore. So that'll just be, um, I'm just going to go through their, some of the partners that we have there. Um, so I think on the next slide, we'll see the Japanese partners, I think. Okay. But before that, um, just let you know that uh, for our partners in Asia, they're predominantly for humanities and social science students. But for our partner, some of our partners in Singapore and the University of Nottingham Nimbo, that is open to engineering and science students. Um, and then law and business students, you'll be able to talk to your program offices to find out where in Asia you can go to, because I know there's a huge mix there as well. So yeah, so yeah, this is what I was expecting. Our um, um, Japanese partners. So we partner with four universities in Japan. Um, we partner with Waseda, Tokyo, Kyoto, and Keio. So the um, all of them, apart from Kyoto, are in Tokyo. Um, and Ra uh, Raphael, I think, get, gave a really good job of summing up what life in Tokyo is like. I also lived in Japan for a year, and I would say a lot of people might be worried about language, but I am absolutely terrible at languages, and I managed to live in a little village. I was the only person that spoke English, and I got by just fine there, so don't worry about that. So if you're going to be in one of the cities, you're going to find that there's a lot more information in English and there's a lot more people that speak, there's a lot more Japanese people that speak English and then there's a lot more international, there's a lot much bigger international community as well. So Japan was voted as, uh, by Go Overseas as the number one destination to study abroad. You're going to get such a cultural experience there. It's so, like their culture is so interesting and it's everywhere. It's really like, you know, really prominent and it's really like there's so many opportunities to explore and the universities often put on different events that may mean you can learn more just as the way we'd have an Irish Irish night in UCD they'll have nights and activities based around their culture as well and then of course I can't talk about Japanese food enough it is just amazing and you'll have it on your doorstep every single day and it, you can get really cheap as well which is great there is so much to see and do in Japan alone it's just beautiful so definitely consider it as a choice um, I think in the next slide, we're going to talk a little bit, yeah, about South Korea. So we, South, South Korea, we have very highly ranked uh, partners in South Korea. They're Seoul National University and Korea University. And uh, again, you're going to get that real cultural immersion once you go to Korea and their university life. They ha have big competitions between different universities and uh, they have real strong uh, um, university spirit as well so it is one of our students i think two years ago was in uh, south korea and she just came back she said it was just an unbelievable experience and again um you can live quite cheaply there which is great so check out their websites to see what the what they suggest the cost of living is but this is a great great destination and and really get great great gateway to visit other places as well in asia um, for Singapore, so Rob talked a lot about Singapore and how safe, clean, organized, and if you ha if you want to splurge, luxurious it can be. But even the just walking around the universities and in, in in Singapore alone, you can it's just phenomenal. They're so beautiful and like outdoor swimming pools and just really nice restaurants. And um, yeah, they're they're great. And as Rob said, they're really highly ranked universities so we have NTU and NUS um, um, Rob mentioned the hawkers so these are this, this is the dining experience as he said he didn't cook at all it's because you can get food really cheaply and it's very convenient I think in NTU every accommodation has a food hall and probably N NUS because as I said uh, eating is a is a very social thing over there and I'd say that's quite common throughout Asia actually so you rarely cook um, so yeah then we have our partners in China and Hong Kong. So one of our partners, our partner, main partner in China is University of Nottingham Nimbo. And this is just an excellent choice. You're gonna get, as it says, university, it's literally University of Nottingham and it's based in a city called Nimbo. And you are gonna get the University of Nottingham um, academic experience because um, it's all taught 
through English, it's their curriculum, it's their teachers, everything like that. Uh, but yet you're going to get this, um, um, the experience of living um, in China, which is just phenomenal. So you won't get too much of a culture shock going into a new academic system. So I would say this is just one of the best partners that we have in Asia. And you should definitely consider it um, as well when it comes to China I think you should think uh, I don't assume that it would be expensive um, but um, the cost of living is um, I, from what I understand pretty cheap when you go to Nimbo um, just see something coming through on the chat there Manon and um, actually we might just go back um, oh okay. yeah, we might just go back to that slide just for a second, Ron. Yeah, because I want to talk about Chinese University of Hong Kong and Hong Kong University. Again, Hong Kong as a city, it's a fantastic city, loads going on, really vibrant. Um, both Chinese University of Hong Kong and Hong Kong University are very uh uh really good universities. Um, again, you can study through English and um, yeah, just the city, just, as I said, it's, absolutely, it's really vibrant and really great you, and very international as well. So you will have no problem fitting in. Um, we might move on to um, South America. So um, if I was a student again, this is I think where I would be studying. Um, I would love to go and study in South America. Um, just the places you can travel to, we had two, we, we had a number of students in South America last year but I'm just thinking about two in particular they were in Mexico and Chile they did so much hiking and trekking and visiting de de destinations and like our really famous des um, destinations in in South America and just amazing again the food I mean I, I think I might be a bit obsessed about food but yeah um just to get to experience that and the culture learning more about it it's so different to to our own culture and the people are just amazingly friendly as well of course there are going to be cultural differences that are are uh, you know there might be a bit of a slower pace or a different way of doing things there you know so you know you might need to adapt a little bit to their way of doing but um yeah just great experience um to to study in south america we have three main partners in south america PUC Chile and um, Tec de Monterrey in Mexico. So that's just north of Mexico City. We might move on. So uh, I just wanted to talk about Switzerland, for example, because I think this is not a destination that students would usually consider. And uh, why would you study in Switzerland? It's a great country that has four official languages. So uh, people in Switzerland speak German, French, Italian, Roman but they also teach through English, so it's a great option. Uh, or partners in Switzerland or amongst the top universities in the country. Uh, it's a country with very high living standards. Uh, Swiss citizens actually have some of the longest life expectancy in the world. And I think just, you know, by the way, um, it is, um, you know, uh, divided. It is an interesting country politically and culturally as well. It has stunning landscapes. And um, if you like like outdoor activities in summer and winter, Switzerland is a great option. Like there's a lot of skiing options. And uh, Lisa talked about food before. Uh, there's a lot of chocolate in Switzerland, which I think is also a great you know, reason to go on exchange there. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Uh, just to, in terms of our partners, so the picture you see here, quality is not great, but this is the this is Lausanne in Switzerland, so I, I could see myself studying there. Uh, we have partners in uh, so the University of Genève, uh, University of Lausanne, EPFL, Ecole Polytechnique Fédérale de Lausanne, which is an engineering partner. So if you're an, en you're an engineer, this is a, a really really good university to study at. Uh, we have a uh, the University of Luzerne and the University of uh, Zurich, which is a partner where you can study if you do arts and humanities or social sciences. Um, then Kleena and Rory talked about uh, studying uh, in Norway and Sweden. So why should you study in the Nordic countries? It is a great option to study in English, but you still get that exchange experience feel. So for some of you who think about studying for English, you may thinking, you may be thinking, oh, I'd like to go to the UK, but it's not quite the same because, you know, it's next door to Ireland and you, you'd like a bit more of that cultural experience. Uh, so I think it is a great option. The language there will not be English in your day to day, but you can still get around with English be 
because people just speak fluently. Mm -hmm. So I think it's great. Uh, or partners again are amongst the top universities and they have the highest rates of student satisfaction in the world. These are really safe countries with, with very high living standards and the Nordic countries really regularly rank amongst the happiest countries in the world. Uh, it is a very different culture and even between them, uh, Sweden, Norway, Denmark or Finland have very different cultures. Um, in the past few years, you've all heard about like the Scandi lifestyle. So words like hygge, fika, lagom, they won't be a secret to you anymore. You can just, you know, hop on your back and get around in Copenhagen. I lived in Copenhagen myself during three years and this was one of the best times in my life. I went there for six months for an internship and I ended up spending three years there. So I think it tells a lot. And uh, finally, it has amazing scenery and loads of nature and outdoor options available, as Rory was saying, like if you're big into skiing and things like that, Norway and Sweden are really great destinations. Um, in Denmark, we have three partners, which are Aarhus University, Aarhus School of Architecture and Copenhagen University. So Aarhus is an option if you study history and Copenhagen would be more of an option if you study biochemistry, physics, sociology or uh, information and communication studies. In Sweden, we have uh, the University of Stockholm. Uh, so that's a partner if you study architecture, geography, politics or social policy. Lund University, where Klina studied, uh, is an option for architecture, politics and humanities and also social sciences in general. And then we have the University of Gothenburg, which is further north, and it's an option if you study geography. And finally, we also have partners in Norway and Finland. So the University of Bergen, where uh, Rory studied, which is an option if you study Celtic studies, archaeology, sociology, or ar architecture, for example. We also have uh, Oslo School of Architecture, or NT and Neutronheim. And uh, in Finland, we have the University of Oulu, uh, if you study architecture, and then uh, the University of Lapland, uh, if you study social policy and social work. Basically now, <laughs> basically now it is your chance just to research your options. And as Rory says, it's, it's, I think it was Rory that said it, it's really good to think about like, what you're interested in and base, like use that as a way of looking at universities and what where you might like to study and also thinking about your budget as well and what where like you know it's really handy to get the Erasmus grant so if that's going to be important then to think about that so yeah there's now it's I suppose the time to to start looking at universities and um, I know people have a lot of questions about visas and things like that but you know at the health insurance kind of those practical things we do touch on those a little bit in these sessions but to be honest until you know exactly which country you're going to there's no point getting into the details of that. We do all that at a very much later stage. You should, of course, check that if you need if you need to study through English, that um, there there are relevant courses or modules in English, and you should check out the academic calendar. For example, in Japan, they start um, I think much earlier in the trimester, and they have a big break at um, in well, it's winter here. And then um, they start, I think they get up and running again in March, Jack, the late February, March, depending on the university. So yeah, just to think about that. Um, so look at the location of where you're thinking about going, read about the areas, read about the accommodation and, safe, and safety and, and use all of these things to think about where you're going to go. But what I would say is don't put too much pressure on yourself to pick the exactly right fit because no matter where you go, you will have a great time. Um, so, for example, Rob only had a blank space on his application form and stuck down Singapore, never really thought about going there, wanted to go there and ended up having the time of his life. So it is, I would say, don't put too much pressure on yourself. Um, as I think, I think it was Rory who said it as well, that there is like there is no matter where you go on our exchange program, you're going to meet other exchange students. You're all going to be in the same boat. You're all there to have a good time, explore, meet new people. So really, no matter where you go, you, you will enjoy it. Um, just again, have a look at the finances. Um, we kind of say about 10,000 inside of Europe, 15,000 outside of Europe, but this really does depend on where you study. So it is worth checking out the, the, the pages on the university websites to see what they suggest as the cost of living. And then um, just to note that you, for some of you, you'll be adding an extra year to your degree. So if you're going away, if the, if the if the, it isn't built into your degree that you go on exchange, uh, so that's our 
predominantly for our arts and humanities students that are on a three-year program and our social science students that are on a three-year program, you'll be adding an additional year to your grade degree. So just to consider that. Um, and then of course, the payment of health insurance this is particularly important for America because it can be quite expensive. So just keep that in mind. Um, and also just, you know, for a lot of the accommodation and um, meal plans might be included, but not to look at that as a negative because that will be your food paid for, for, for your entire stay or whether or not they, in some of our partners, the, food, the meal plan might be included at all. So just, it's worth just, I mean, definitely don't get too bogged down on, on where you're thinking about going on exchange. Um, it's really just putting down like, you know, where you think you're going to have a good time and where, and most importantly, where you can get the classes that you need if you have to get specific classes. Um, so yeah, we talked through this on some of the other slides. So I'll just go through our, in the other sessions and um, three of them are up USA and Canada is going up um today or tomorrow and then we'll have the australian new zealand up this week along with this session as well so all the sessions will be on our website but we will go through this section just really briefly again so just to think about terminology so when you go to a different university they will have different words for different things so it's always worth trying to get your head around that early if you're not sure about anything just ask and the partner universities are always they're really there to make sure that you have a good experience so they won't mind no question is a silly question um, assessment might be a bit different so you might notice that there's a lot more continuous assessment so that's worth worth um, thinking about so it's always good to be chatting with your with the, the students that are in your class and just making sure you have a good understanding of uh, and the, and actually not to forget the lecturers that you have to, and the tutors that you'll have just to make sure that you've got a good understanding of what they're expecting from your assessment and um, participation so it was really interesting to hear about clean clean time in sweden there and, and what participation was like it seems like it there was a much more participation there which was really interesting a really interesting way of learning things and um, so yeah just to note that it can be different and i would say in america for example you know a lot of the the um, lecturers would expect would you know be expected that you'd be participating in the, in the class and um, then the size of the classes can can vary so just to keep that in mind as well and some of it across the world some of it can be very very small classes like I know for example in Singapore a lot of their classes are very small but then some of them can be absolutely huge so just keep in mind it won't always be the same as UCD the level this is really straightforward and um, you know most of our partners follow a similar like if there's one at the start they're a, a stage one level to stage two etc so it is important though that you are keeping in mind that you're not doing anything too easy when to get over there that you're not going to do anything that you've done before or that you're not going to study anything that you um, are due to study when you come back to UCD but you will have these discussions with um, you will have these discussions with um, an academic and in your in your school so don't worry too much about that just yet wait until you get um, selected for a university um, there might be different expectations and relationships with academics so just to keep that in mind um, you might as I said be participating more they might do um, attendance and they might expect you to be going to office hours so just keep those in mind and it's worth just chatting with the the other students in the class and um, just to figure out that kind of things and that they'll definitely help you out and then of course module registration which can be the, one of the most um, challenging parts of going on exchange is finding modules that are right for you and um, so bear in mind this can be a bit of a tricky step but um, a, bit, a bit of patience and um, chatting to the right people and keep asking um, in the international office at the university that you're going to or the um, lecture of the class and you might need to go and wait list or whatever but usually all 99.9% .9 of the time all of our students get sorted with the modules that they need it just can be a little bit of work during our at the start of the at the start of your time <clears throat> on exchange so just to keep that in mind but you don't have to worry about that right now um okie dokie and I think I'm handing over to you now Manon uh, so if you've been attending your session uh, or session, sorry, and you're wondering what to do now, so these are would be your next steps. So the first thing really would be to check out your school or college website and the UCG Global website, because this is where you'll find what your options are in terms of, you know, where you can apply depending on what you're studying. And also for some of you, your colleges have really detailed websites. If you have like, if you're a social sciences student and you have a specific combination, uh, just go there and check because depending on your combination, you may only be able to apply to some universities. 
and then research the universities, uh, check the universities you're interested in, their websites uh, to find, you know, all the information Lisa mentioned before, what is their academic calendar, what's their course like, and uh, their social media is also a great place to see, you know, what, what you can expect from them. Uh, you will also need to meet the requirements in terms of GPA and language, so that will also depend on uh, what you're studying and your colleges may have different requirements. You also need to speak to your exchange coordinator, so that will be more for Erasmus, but also engineering and science. Check, you know, if the university you're interested in is a great option for you. Can you get the classes you need? Will this be a match for, um, for example, for your subject? And then really think about your finances and start a saving plan. This is really important. So for Erasmus, yes, you do have the grant, but this is only meant to be a contribution. This is not meant to cover um, your whole exchange. So most students will have to self-fund for part of their exchange anyway, or all of their exchange. And uh, finally, we have a study of fair. So that's on the 4th of November. Am I right, Lisa? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, so, yeah it's a Wednesday, yeah. So we'll send more information about this uh, in the next during the next week. And, and finally, yeah, this is just a, a short timeline. So as we mentioned, we have our virtual exchange fair on the 4th of November. And next month, Lisa and I will have virtual office hours. So you can book a slot with, it, uh, with us and just uh, chat with us about your options and if you have any questions. Our application will open mid-November and will close on the 23rd of January. I think that's to be confirmed yet. And then the selection will be rolling yeah. uh, on a rolling basis. And by the 15th of March, you'll know uh, if you've been selected and where you're going. And finally, between February and April, we'll have some pre-departure sessions. The so students going outside of the EU will have their sessions first. And further on, we'll have the uh, inside of Europe sessions. Uh, these are our contact details. So if you have any questions about studying without, uh, within Europe, sorry, that would be me. So my name is Manon. And then if you're interested in studying outside of Europe, uh, you can contact Lisa. If you're an agriculture, business, law, or social sciences students, there are specific contacts uh, for you and you have their details here. And uh, I think we can move on to questions. Yeah, that's great, Manon, thanks. We're going to have our um, exchange fair and basically that's going to be on Wednesday, November 4th. And um, it's going to be the opportunity to hear from students that have been on exchange about different, their different experiences. And there'll be a chance to ask questions for, to the students, but also you can ask questions to us. So we'll send out the time, the times and, and when that is um, next week. Okay. Um, I just have a question here. I have the partner universities been sorted for all schools yet. So we're still working on this, uh, especially on the Erasmus side. I think the partners are up to date on the outside of Europe side, I think, Lisa? Yeah. Yeah. So all of our partners, yeah. if you go outside of Europe, you'll see all of the partners that you can apply to there. Um, there's some of them will have a link to a, your specific school. But if you go to UCD Global, Learning Abroad and outside of Europe, you'll be able to see all the partners that you can apply to right there. Um, and then for inside of Europe, um, they're pretty much there, but there might be one or two changes. But you, it's a good place to start, though, Manon, right? Yeah, no, it is, definitely. And then, uh, as we said before, on your own colleges or school website, sometimes you also have a list for your specific program of the options you have. Excellent. Uh, second question, uh, where can I find the recordings? So this is a question already answered in the chat, but they are all on the UCD Global website. Great. Okay. Thanks, okay. everyone. Thank Bye. you.